Hey, Gary Hoover here. You know that I love books. I live in a library right below me where I'm standing right now. There are over 50,000 books on all different sorts of subjects, including business and entrepreneurship, one of my many interests. And I'm always recommending uh, you can come to these video reviews on YouTube and say, oh, I, you should read this book and read that book. But I also believe in magazines, in periodicals, in newspapers and things. And perhaps the most cost-effective way to learn about business in America is by reading the business magazines and reading the real stories of real business people and their challenges, their successes, their failures. Another key thing that these magazines bring to us are lists. Now, I started out, I grew up in the General Motors factory town, Anderson, Indiana. GM was the big thing in town. 27,000 people worked there. Nobody could tell me anything about business or about General Motors, a little about business, really nothing about General Motors other than they made Chevy and Pontiac. And I was in a newsstand with my family and discovered this magazine. This is the Fortune 500 list of the 500 biggest companies in America. This came out in July of 1963. I was 12 years old. I opened it up. I went through the 500 biggest companies in America, of which the biggest was General Motors, learned a lot about them, and I've been reading that ever since. This, when the new one came out, this spring, May 23rd, 2011, it was the 49th year in a row I ran to the mailbox, because I've been subscribing all those years since I was 12, I ran to the mailbox, grabbed the Fortune 500 issue, and went to my room and went down through all 500 companies. I looked at their sales, I looked at their earnings, I looked how the stock's doing, how many people they employ, where they're headquartered, which ones are up, which ones are down. I've been doing that for 49 years. I cannot tell you how much I've learned from doing that and how much further that puts me ahead of everybody else in terms of understanding how business works. So this, and, and you know, this little magazine's only, is the price even on it? Uh, well, it's a few bucks, under 10 bucks, maybe under five bucks. Uh, uh, it's, it's incredible the value you get for that. The Fortune 500 is not the only list I read. I pulled two others out here. One, the Inc. 500, now this just came out, fall of 2011, so it's still on the newsstands. And most all these lists, you can find them on the publisher's websites, usually accessible for free. But to me, there's nothing like curling up in a chair and flipping through and reading them line by line and getting a, a sense of it and a little more portable than a computer. Well, I guess with the iPad, we're getting better, but, and, and, and the Kindle Fire and, what, and, and, and the Nook. Uh, anyhow, this is the 500 fastest growing private companies in America. At least that's the goal of this great Inc. magazine to do that. Now, those companies have to tell Inc. magazine what their sales are. And a private company, you know, is one that doesn't have any public stockholders. Its owners, its stockholders privately own it. They don't have to report to the public. And so some big private companies, like the Mars Candy Bar people, they don't want anybody knowing anything about their company, so they're not going to tell Inc. magazine. So this is not every private company in America, and they miss a lot. A lot of venture capital backed companies companies won't show up here because the venture capitalists don't want those companies telling everybody how big they are, what their revenue is, how fast they're growing. They'd rather sneak up on their competitors. Well, there's plenty of companies that are willing to say, oh, we did this much revenue. And so Inc. gathers all those that are willing to talk. And, and then it has it by industry, by part of the country. You, I went down through all 500 of these companies as soon as this came out. And I was amazed at, in a way, how few companies are in high tech. Sure, there were plenty of them, but there's even more companies doing restaurants and fashion items and shoes and all sorts of things you'd never expect, which reinforces my own belief, shared by the great Peter Drucker, that most business opportunity is not in high tech. High tech's wonderful, but don't just look there when you're looking for opportunities. And, and you just a lot of surprises. These companies, you never heard of this outfit, and they're already doing 300 million a year, and they're only a couple years old. Amazing to read this. The third one I pulled up, a little different take on things, just came out also. Forbes magazine has for many years now did a list of the richest people in America. And this is a Forbes 500, 400, sorry. Uh, uh, everybody else is 500. It takes a lot of work to try to figure out who are the richest people because you can't just look at how much stock they own. So a lot of it's private wealth. Let's face it, a big share of all wealth ends up in real estate. So you've got to find out, well, who owns that skyscraper? Oh, it's owned by a company. It's owned by 14 people. Well, who owns half of it? And that's not public information. So it takes a lot of good guessing and estimating. Pretty straightforward. If you can look at, say, Bill Gates, say, oh, he owns this many shares of Microsoft, multiply it out by the price, and you know a lot. It's amazing because when you go through this, you get yet another perspective on the breadth, the innovation, the diversity, the complexity 
of our economy. Because you've got people that are worth fortunes that you never think about. There might even be some athletes. Forbes does separate issues about the, uh, the highest paid athletes and actors and actresses, entertainers and all that, which are also very cool to read. You learn a lot about it. A lot of surprises. It's not always who you think. But this magazine is full of surprises. And because a lot of these are private wealth, uh, big real estate owners, like I said, or people who own companies you may not be familiar with because they just sell to businesses or they make some complicated scientific part. Um, you know, every page is a surprise. You, here, I just opened one. It's the Google Boys, Ser Brin, Sergey Brin and Larry Page. But right with them, a guy named John Paulson. He's a big hedge fund guy. Michael Dell, you've heard of him. Steve Ballmer, you've heard of him. And then the three Mars, uh, two brothers and a sister, each worth $14 billion. Um, and they're, they're all those people are in the, um, they're ranked 15th through 20th wealthiest Americans. But there's another 380 after that. And so between those magazines, and watch for list issues. One that I hadn't seen before, Fortune just did another list, and it's the 100 fastest growing companies, but these are big public companies. Inc. Magazine is covering private companies that haven't sold stock to the public. These are companies where you can look up all the data. They're public companies. And so Fortune did this list, and this just came out recently, the 100 uh, fastest growing um, uh, companies. And it's another great list. So just scanning those lists. but. They're really gateways to further information because when I see a company say, A, I've never heard of them, B, it's an industry I'm really interested in, C, man, these guys are huge and profitable or whatever, you know, or they, they created 15,000 jobs last year, I need to learn about them, maybe we should tell Washington about this outfit, you know. Uh, then I go research them other places and, you know, like everybody else, I start on the web. And uh, virtually every company's got a website. If it's a public company, you can find all their financial statements and their filings with the federal government and all their reports to stockholders and how much their executives get paid and a wealth of information if they're a public company. But even if they're a private company, I can learn about them or I can research them and find articles written about them, like in the great city business journals published all over the United States or in local newspapers. But in any case, so a lot of times I'm just using those lists as a trigger for me. So I need to know more about this or this person this enterprise because never forget people and enterprises are intermixed and that's why I love that rich list because you see both the people and it talks about them and you know whether they're married and how many kids they have or whatever and how old they are um, uh, on a kind of personal level as well as understanding their enterprises anyway you can get all three of those magazines for less than 30 bucks whatever um, maybe get all the information for free if you just want to do the web and, and don't have to have a piece of paper in your hand like I do it's a powerful wonderful source that I find people don't use enough. And I urge you, if you're going to be ahead of the curve, to use it. This is Gary Hoover. Good to see you again. I'll talk to you later.